Hello everyone. Welcome to Weary Traveling with Jesus. Today, August 6, 2021, Karen from Philippines will read a book from Catholic Liturgical Calendar and Yulita Yang from Jibaran Bali will read a saint story. And for formation teaching, it's about fear. Read by Sister Judy Bow, missionaries of God's love from the OGCC Canberra, Australia. Happy listening! Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to Weary Traveling with Jesus channel, a channel of Holy Gospel readings available in three languages, Indonesia, English, and Italian. Now you can access the reading in Indonesia and English separately every day and the readings in Italian available only on Sunday. We hope you enjoy it. Reflection One of the transfiguration accounts is read on the second Sunday of Lent each year, proclaiming Christ's divinity to the elect and baptized alike. The gospel for the first Sunday of Lent, by contrast, is the story of the temptation in the desert, a affirmation of Jesus' humanity, the two distinct but inseparable natures, of the Lord was subject of much theological argument at the beginning of church history. It remains hard for believers to grasp. According to scripture scholars, in spite of the text agreement, it is difficult to reconstruct the disciples' experience because the gospel draw heavily on Old Testament description of the Sinai encounter with God and prophetic vision of the Son of Man. Certainly Peter, James, and John had a glimpse of Jesus to find it is strong enough to strike fear into their hearts. Such an experience defies description, so they drew on family or religious language to describe it. And certainly Jesus warned them that his glory on his suffering were to be inextricably connected, a theme John highlights throughout his gospel. Tradition names Mount Tabor as the site of the Revelation. A church first raised there in the 4th century was dedicated on August 6. A feast in honor of the Transfiguration was celebrated in the Eastern Church were from about that time. Western observance began in some localities about the 8th century. On July 22, 1456, Crusader defeated the Turks at Belgrade. News of the victory reached Rome on August 6, and Pope Callistus III placed the feast on the Roman calendar the following year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Holy Spirit, beloved of my soul, I adore you. Enlighten me, guide me, console me, tell me what I should do, give me your orders. I submit myself to all that you desire of me, and to accept all that you permit to happen to me. Let me only know your will. Amen. Today is Friday, 6th of August, 2021. It is the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. First reading, a reading from the book of Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up and the Ancient One took His throne. 
His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, the One like a Son of Man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice, let the many islands be glad. Clouds and darkness are around about Him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of His throne. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord. Before the Lord of all the earth, the heavens proclaim His justice, and all people see His glory. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. Because you, O Lord, are the Most High over all the earth, exalted far above all gods. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Peter. Second reading, a reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised means when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of His majesty. For He received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to Him from the majestic glory. This is my Son, my Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with Him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it, as to a lamp shining in a dark place until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The Word of the Lord. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John, and led them up high mountain apart by themselves. And He was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So, they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord Hello people doing formation, I'm Judy Bow, and um, our topic today is fear. 
The aim of this talk is to look at fear and its place in our emotional landscape. Why do we fear? And what's the Christian response to fear? I'm very interested in this topic because I've always struggled with fear myself, mostly of public speaking, other things like heights, confined spaces, very recently, fear of going on reality TV. But the good thing about this talk is that God doesn't let us stay stuck in our fears. I found this kind of formation really helpful. And like not so long ago, I was reading a book and on a similar kind of formation -y type of book. It was called The Courage Gap. And I was all inspired. I was thinking, oh yeah, I really want to live life as a daring adventure. I don't want fear to stop me from doing anything God might ask me to do. Put the book down and thought, yes. And it wasn't long after that that the people from The Amazing Race rang up and said, are you interested in discerning this? And in the process of discerning it, I remembered that new resolve to live with courage and not fear. And I thought, oh, God is so funny. And my courage was really tested. I always thought that fear was mostly my personal problem, so it really helped me to find out that everyone experiences fear. It's part of the basic human makeup and it serves a useful purpose in our lives. I always just wanted to get rid of it as a big fat problem. But fear is good and natural. The body produces hormones with fear to activate the body for action. And it's a natural body reaction that equips us to deal with different situations. It helps you to run away faster, to fight harder, to be stronger, for your brain to be sharper. And it's a mechanism to prevent injury or hurt from happening. So it's a good thing. But what is fear? Simple definition of fear, it's an anxious feeling caused by an anticipation of some imagined event or experience. So fear, like other emotions, has no morality. It's not a sin. That comes out of the catechism. It's not good or bad, but it's what we do with it that counts. So it alerts us to a situation or a set of conditions, and then we decide to respond well or badly and it prepares us the basic value of it is to prepare us to deal effectively with danger so to fear to take risks is bad but to have fear at the edge of a cliff or in the middle of a minefield is smart and good Jesus, my Lord and my God, present in me, I adore you. Through you, I praise and adore the Eternal Father. Heavenly Father, in you I give thanks for your most precious gift to me in giving your Son to us in the sacrament. You saw again your love for us and your concern for our welfare. To you, I offer heartfelt thanks. Your majesty, I adore. Your perfection, I praise. Your goodness, I love. With my blessed Mother Mary and with all the angels and saints in heaven, I join in adoring and praising you, Heavenly Father, and your eternal Son, and the Holy Spirit of your divine love. Amen. May through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and the prayers of Our Lady, we will all be freed from the curse filled with joy, love, and receive the blessings of Abraham, which God blessed in all things. Exaltation, healed, the ability to endure suffering and still bear fruit, prosperity, 
victory, humility, and favor of God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. If you have an adventure with Jesus, please send to our team your audio, video, or lettering on email wearewithtravelingwithjesus at gmail.com. Thank you. Dear brothers and sisters, those are the readings for today. We hope you enjoy it. And see you again tomorrow from We Live Traveling with Jesus. Goodbye.